Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about scary blue stars. And I have to admit, this image blew me away. So come on, let's get sucked into the science. We are at Universe Today, today. Talking about scary blue stars, which may unlock a mysteries of stellar evolution. Imagine a star more luminous than a million suns. Whoa, that would be bright. Erupting every few decades in a massive flare that shines as bright as a supernova. Whoa, that would be bright. But the blast, as ferocious as it is, does not obliterate the tumultuous star. It remains, its surface rolling with violence as spasms rock its inner layers. Soon enough, the star will end its suffering in a final titanic blast. But before it does, it must suffer in this state for thousands of years. All right, let me stop you there, Mr. Paul Sutter and science. Science has this thing called the accretion disk model, where dust and gas get so heavy in the vacuum of space, it collapses upon itself and then creates the sun and the solar system as we know it, like planet Earth. That's how horses and cars were made. Dust and gas got so heavy, it collapsed and then made horses. Make sense? No. No, it does not. Because I was thinking about it, and we know what a supernova is. It's when, I'll put in supernova gif, and just in case someone has no idea what a supernova is. You really should, especially if you're in a rock and roll band or a poet. Okay. It's when the star explodes. And so, basically saying like, the star explodes when it runs out of fuel. But then it kind of says, when it gets to this point, when it's kicked all of its matter out, then it collapses upon itself again. So, the crash and disk model is really just the reverse of a supernova. Which is kind of weird. You understand what I'm talking about? All right. Yeah, science is weird. All right, let's keep going. There might have been too much science for you. This is a rare luminous blue variable star, and it may hold the keys to understanding the link between the lives of stars and their deaths. Uh, this was written for Halloween, so if it's spookier than you want, you may want to tap out now. And yes, this video is part of the Thor News Save and Support Thor News Fundraiser for November. I do them at the front of every month, and I guess just like this video, this fundraising period is the scariest of the year, I guess, due to the election, since I kicked ass during all year, and then especially during hurricane season. So if you want to keep me around, I highly recommend making a donation to my PayPal link, which I'll leave in the box. Um, I need a money miracle. So if any fat cats out there want to reward all my hard efforts, I would appreciate it. And if you're too poor, please send prayers. I definitely need them. So yeah, I'm in a blue period. Luminous blue variable. Stars are indeed incredibly rare. Eh, okay. We'll take your word for it. Astronomers have only identified about 20. Maybe. And suspect there are only a few hundred in the Milky Way. Tops. You look, dude, I don't need to know the... Sexual stylings of these stars, okay? Thank you. Since they're so rare, they're poorly understood. Hey, kind of like me. And you. And since they're so poorly understood, they're hard to characterize. Do we have to characterize everything? Well, I guess that is part of science's job. Hey, looks like a giant peanut. That's what exploding stars are. Giant peanuts. Nah, that was dumb. I'm trying too hard. Okay, great. Take a breath. Breathe with me. Here's what we do know. They're big. Really big. The smallest run in the range of 10 times the mass of our sun. While the biggest break the scales at potentially over 100 times the mass of our sun. But even the small ones start out much, much bigger. That is definitely what she said. And then I got punched in the face by political correctness. Because those jokes are no longer allowed. And have only shrunk to the size now due to extreme outbursts that ejected their own atmosphere into space. They're bright. 
with luminosities starting at 250,000 times that of the sun, going up to 3 million times to that of the sun. Man, do you guys always have to put math in your science shit? I just want to know. That puts their surface temperature in the 10,000 to 25,000 K range. That's a lot of strikeouts. Several times hotter than our own star. That's good to know. Although, technically, if you're a human being that is like 4 foot 11, and then you're a human being that is like 6 foot 9, they're both going to have the same inner temperature. Pretty much. Their rarity is probably due to their short life times. Wait, what? Their rarity is probably due to their short lifetimes. Many of the most massive stars, and maybe all of the big ones, <clears throat> go through this phase. Well... That's, you know, that makes sense. Like, if you have guys like Sean Bradley or like 7-Eleven or usually the super tall people don't, or the super heavy people don't live as long as the normal sized people. So I guess that applies to stars as well. Many of the most massive stars and maybe all the big ones go through this phase. What if there's a Superman Neo anomaly star that just like lives forever? And it's giant. But it's towards the tail end of their lives, right before they start riding the supernova train. And then, what if they just blow all that stuff off and in the center of it is a neutron star? So that it has gone from like a caterpillar to a butterfly. And so it's not really death, it's just transformation. And then we'll go through this LBV stage in less than 100,000 years. That's short enough in a typical galaxy. We only expect to see a total of a few hundred at one time. They're impulsive, turbulent, and unstable. Hey, kind of like me. Ah, whatever. I'm stable. I mean, except for the fact that my survival depends upon your contributions and donations this month and next month. Other than that, yeah, I'm stable AFRN. One of the first LBV stars discovered at a Carini was the second brightest star in the sky. For three days in March 1843, it is no longer visible to the naked eye. And here's what we don't know. Everything else. It's rare you hear science say stuff like that. Unless they're asking for money. But, I don't know, man. I said, hey, we will get hit by two hurricanes. Hurricane season 2017. Or two or more, I said. We did. And this year, I was like, hey, we're going to hit by two more hurricanes this year. And we did. And the next year, guess what? We're going to hit by two more hurricanes. So my science... You know, it's kind of verifiable. Sometimes science isn't verifiable. Like, I don't know. I can't tell you shit about blue stars. We don't even have the Hubble up. Can you imagine if we had like four cameras or telescopes all around the planet and you could just punch in live to see whatever that telescope was looking at any day, 24-7. Imagine if I had 30 frames a second. That would be wild, huh? I'm priming the pump. Another gasoline reference. Perhaps the biggest mystery to the LBV stars is what makes them so dang variable. What makes people so dang variable? What drives their infrequent but fantastic outbursts? Kind of like mine. You guys seem to like it when I melt down and go crazy. Mm, that's weird. Well, it's hard to tell, obviously, because as you might imagine, these stars are incredibly complicated physical systems. Researchers suspect it involves an intricate dance between the inner and the outer layers of the stars. Interesting. If, civ if civilization is going to survive and thrive, I think we all have to learn an intricate dance together. And we should start by all holding hands and taking one step forward into the future. LBV stars experience some of the worst internal bowel syndrome you could possibly imagine. Their guts are constantly rolling up and down with massive conductive currents ferreting hot material from the core and cool material from the surface. Man, I bet solar chocolate milk is delicious. This is pretty standard as far as normal stars go. But in the LBV stars, this process goes nuts. Dairy and nuts. This is a hard science for you. The convection actively pushing chunks of the outermost stellar layers well beyond their normal confines. Yeah, supernovas are messy. Slightly detached from the star due to the convection. And convection means like sugar. No, I made that up. The outer layers finally catch a break 
from the intensity and start to cool off. This increases their density, blocking the starlight between them. The radiation then pushes, dash, just like a light sail. But, and a light sail is when government sells you light coming from the star as a tax. Gosh, dang, my jokes are off. Horrible, bad. But way more seriously, that chunk of star stuff, let me say that again, that chunk of star stuff, completely ejecting it from the star altogether and a massive burst of light and matter. There are a lot more details that need to be worked out in that story. Of course. And an important question lingers. Is the LBV stage of a massive star, with all its ill-tempered fits, the precursor to an even crazier epoch of stellar evolution known as the wolf rayet phase? Or does it lead directly to a final supernova show? Man, that is a great question. And I like to ask it at parties when I'm the only one there. Giant stars of a feather stick together. Hey, did you know that over 50% of the stars in the universe are binary? And dwarf red stars are everywhere, man. If we had a few hundred thousand years to just watch these stars live and die with our one telescope, the Hubble, that is 25 years old, this question would be easier to answer. But we don't, so it's hard. One clue comes from their relationships to their stellar kin. Man. I have heard that sibling rivalries can be the most, most ruthless, vicious, nasty, and insidious out there. But I don't know. I haven't really talked to my family in six months since my stepfather passed away. If the life story of the most massive stars in our galaxy is a giant star, luminous blue variable, wolf rayet, kaboom, and each stage is relatively short, kind of like life, then we ought to see these stages all mixed together in the same general vicinity, and then in a Hubble photograph. A bunch of big stars would be born together, grow old together, and die together. That sounds sweet. I bet they'd make a lot of great music, and possibly some wonderful movies. I do like that image. I don't know why. Somebody's going to say, because it looks like a butthole. And nope, I'm not a butthole man, dude. And thanks for making this episode go all juvenile. But if the LBV stars are their own independent road to Boomtown, then there shouldn't be any general relationship to their wolf riot cousins. They'll be in their own retirement communities on the opposite sides of our city, so to speak. Go ahead and speak so. The best place to go hunting for these potential connections is the large... Let me try that again. Is the large... Magellanic cloud, since a, since it's a pretty isolated clump in a single patch of the sky. The research has gone back and forth over the past few years over the question of clumpiness. Ah, clumpiness, I love you, of LBV stars as astronomers tweak and twist the definitions of clumpiness and LBV. Well, if there's anybody that can get to the definition of clumpiness, it's astronomers. And this is one of those rare times that you get plus 10 to defining words by wearing sweatpants and seeking out the true meaning of clumpiness. Did I make any good jokes? I don't know. The latest iteration, thanks to a paper recently accepted for publication in the Astrophysical Journal, strengthens the standards as standard as it gets in these kind of cases. Picture of LBVs they are just one of the many vicious stages towards the end of a massive star's life. Which means that by understanding how LBVs work, we can learn how giant stars will eventually die. We're crazy. Well, this story was interesting and fascinating, and yes, blue stars, blue stars are interesting. So if you enjoyed this or any of my other work over the last six years, my six year anniversary will be on the 23rd this month, Please be sure to donate and contribute to Thor News, and I will continue to bring you awesome space, solar, earth, and general wackiness news and information. Plus, I'll keep making jokes, because the world needs more humor. So I'll leave a PayPal link in my information box. 
save me if you can and if you want to. If you don't, hey, that's cool. And this is also the moment when my haters get to be like, ha ha, Thor's going to fail. And I get to be like, oh no, am I going to fail or will I get a money miracle? Who knows? It is exciting every single time, every single month. You guys do save me every single time. I love you. You guys are great. Asteroid Fight Club forever. Everybody stay cool. Let's live long and prosper together. God bless everyone. May the force be with y'all always. Peace out. And then peace in. And then peace out. And then peace in again.